Hello Scorpio, welcome to Monarch Intuition and today I'm going to be doing your October 2022 mid-monthly check-in reading for you. So if you're new to my channel, what I like to do is like pull one major arcana to see the energy and then clarify what the different decks. So this one wants to flip. We have the Hermit coming out. It's funny because what I was seeing for you before I was shuffling was I saw the King of Cups and I saw the Eight of Swords. I feel like you're going around inside of a thought process right here trying to see things from a different point of view, but you can't. I feel like what you need to do is you need to seek wise counsel right here. You need to ask questions. Um, maybe if you just go and talk to someone, whoever it is, they could illuminate something to you. I feel like you have a thought. You have an idea. You're wondering about something. You're thinking very deeply about a certain situation, a certain person within your life. Why do people act that way? What's going on inside the world? But you're not seeing it from a higher perspective, okay? The higher perspective is that, well, it, I mean, the hermit could illuminate it to you, whatever you're trying to think about. You could be thinking about, well, why is the world run this way? Well, I mean, when you really think about it, why the world is run this way, you have to look no further than clinical psychology. The higher up you go in a social structure, the more you're going to deal with people who are narcissistic, um, sociopathic, Machiavellian type of people. Machiavellian type of people, I can't remember how to pronounce it, but the higher you go up, the more people have darker triad traits where they're doing more self-serving things. So it's really easy for people to become charismatic and put people under like a hallucination spell to put people under some sort of mind control to get them to follow them. In a way, it's kind of like vampires and kind of like fairies, how they use that glamour energy. And that's why when you look at politicians, sometimes they don't really make sense. However, people are like fawning all over them because they've been put under a spell. And I kind of feel like that's what this is. Maybe you're put under a spell. Maybe you're wondering why you like something so much. What is the appeal? I talked about it in Cancer's reading. I told Libra to go and uh, watch Cancer's reading. That had a very, very occultic message. So I kind of feel like that's what's going on for you. Just replace all the times I said Cancer with Scorpio, okay? And that's what I'm seeing with this hermit energy is that you have something. You're thinking about something, but you can't understand why, all right? So let's look at... The revelations here. What need to be what needs to be revealed to Scorpio right here? What needs to be revealed to Scorpio? Maybe you're dealing with the cancer. Maybe you have cancer aspected within your chart. So you need to see, see see something from a higher perspective. But with the hermit, something is going to be revealed to you. But what you do with the information is you need to look at it and see something from a higher perspective as well. Okay. The hermit represents, you know, a master mason. The hermit can represent a very old occultist or a very old magician, someone who knows, he's basically Merlin the magician, all right? He wanders around seeing who he can help. He wanders around and teaches people his spells, teaches people who really need help how to do things. The hermit is also kind of representation. There is a, um, there's a demon. It wasn't actually a demon until the Catholic Church came along, but the demon's name is Gremory, and it wanders around in the desert and depending on how good you are as a person, it can help you or it can hinder you. It shows all great things. It's a man who dresses up like a woman, sits, I believe, on a camel. And, you know, he can show you the great treasures. He can teach you great knowledge and prophecy, things of that nature. It's kind of like the same concept when you look at the movie John Wick. I believe it was Parabellum, the third movie. Maybe, yeah, I think it was the third. Maybe it was the second where he's wandering around in the desert and the uh, man comes along with that desert caravan. That's the concept of Gremory in a movie right there. What you need to do is maybe you're watching a movie and you don't understand the concepts. Like, what does, what does that even have to do? You know, when you look at that whole movie and you understand demonology or you understand the occult or you understand because you've read all these things, you know, you can pinpoint exactly what they're trying to say within a message right there. Like when you look at, um, say, John Wick, his name is the Baba Yaga or something like that. It's a very, very powerful witch. And then, you know, he's wandering in the um, mountain or in the desert to meet Gremory, which is a very powerful demon. Like, that's kind of the situation right there. Maybe that's what you need to do is with that hermit energy, be enlightened to a situation and then see how you can apply that knowledge to other things within your life, okay? And here's the thing. A lot of people get scared because, you know, religion or whatever tells them not to look at certain aspects of, you know, knowledge. For example, you know, when you learn something in school, it's really great to have a reference as to why you have to learn something, all right? The reason you have to learn certain things 
is they have a very long mythology or a really long mysticism behind them. For example, I talked about it before, the concept of the Pythagorean theory and then there being a cult of Pythagoras who worship the pentagram. The pentagram intersects at something called the golden ratio. The pentagram is a holy number called five, which is why we have the pentacles in the tarot deck. When we look at the five of pentacles, it's on a stained glass chapel. When we look at the five of pentacles or the hierophant, which is supposed to be the Pope, is represented by the number five. Like I talked about this your last reading, but I'm reiterating it here. And we have like right here on this hermit energy, there is the number five. So maybe five is very significant to you. We're on five minutes right here. So I feel like that's something that's very important for you, Scorpio, is that it's what you do with the knowledge and how you apply it to other aspects. For example, a lot of people don't know this, but one of my favorite, favorite movies in the world is called Sucker Punch. Now, when it came out, a lot of people were like, oh my gosh, it's just a bunch of girls fighting and they look like they're Sailor Moon characters. Sucker Punch is one of the most occultic movies that's ever been made, okay? It has the concept of Project Monarch. It has the concept of the um, different layers of the psyche going into different layers, kind of like the matrix or kind of like, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not the matrix, Inception, that movie Inception, how there were different layers of like, you know, the beta kittens, there was the white rabbit, there was the concept of the Cold War. If you want to understand um, Sucker Punch, go and watch the movie Red Sparrow. They're basically the same movies without all the action sequence. So what is going on with this hermit energy? What do we need to know? You have the Page of Swords in reverse. You have the Page of Pentacles upright, and you have the Six of Pentacles in reverse. I feel like someone is spying on you with how you use your money right here. So someone is spying on your money, your wealth. And I kind of feel like with the Six of Pentacles is that they're saying that you just spend your money, you go crazy with it. But I feel like something is going to be illuminated to this Page of Swords, right? about this Page of Swords right here. Or maybe you're going to be illuminated to a situation that people are spending their money when they shouldn't be. Could be spending other people's money. This could be a thief right here. So let's clarify this page of swords. Why is this page of swords here? What are they doing? So it kind of represents, you know, wanting to get one up on the competition, wanting to look and see and understand what someone is doing. So this could be, you know, someone here. Or maybe that's what the hermit is illuminating to you. If you understand the secrets of the occult, because once again, hermit is like Merlin the magician, you can use this knowledge and peer into other aspects, movies, symbology, like, um, you know, on all state buildings, there's the scales of justice. Justice is associated to the goddess Themis. Like all these symbols and all these things have a meaning behind them. They all stem from paganism. Okay. They all stem from Greek occultism to Roman occultism. I know I talk about it a lot, but... It really helps you maneuver in society when you understand that that's how the country was built. For example, when you look at America, the United States of America, it was built by Freemasons. All the founding fathers were inside of Freemasonry society. All the symbols that are on the dollar bill, everything. Like a lot of people say that the eye, the, the triangle with the eye is like a symbol of the Illuminati. It's actually the eye of Providence, the eye of God. When we look at, say, the Illuminati, because a lot of people associate the hermit to the Illuminati. The Illuminati didn't last very long, okay? They were, like, around for 10 years. People say, the Illuminati's still in control of everything. They're, they were a knockoff version of the Freemasons, okay? They saw what the Freemasons had, and they were like, we want to do something similar to the Freemasons, and we're going to use the Owl of Minerva, and that's going to teach us wisdom and all that. That'll be our symbol. And so they pulled a lot of symbology from me Freemasonry, and used it to try to build their own society, and then they got destroyed. What we have now, what a lot of people are seeing as the Illuminati, is more like a globalist totalitarian government. It's not really the Illuminati, okay? The Illuminati had like other aspects and other goals. So what we're seeing now is like still different branches of occultism, of secret societies that are trying to run the world, that are still trying to rule things. However, if you understand the symbols, I'm not saying to follow them or to use them or whatever, but you can see them and say, ah, I understand what that means. I'm going to go there or I'm not going to do that. Like understanding how astrology works is really good when it comes to like investing. JP Morgan, I believe it was, millionaires don't use astrology, billionaires use astrology. Like if you know how to use something, if you know how to do something right here, it's very important for you. So Page of Swords is spying on the Page of Pentacles. Why? Knight of Pentacles, Nine of, nine of Pentacles. So the Nine and the Knight. 
Someone is spying on how you use your money right here. Someone is seeing your own garden. Someone sees that you're very good at growing your garden right here. You have the page of pentacles. But the six of pentacles has me worried because it's like they either want you to spend the money on them. This could be someone is, you know, kind of like trying to get you to spend money on them with the six of pentacles in reverse. But someone knows you have money. Someone knows you're very studious with your money. You're able to grow your own garden. What's this page of pentacles? We have the two of wands. We have the four of swords. I kind of feel like this person notices all you kind of do is like go to work and go home and sleep. That's how you're able to make your money is that you work hard. You go and do things and then you go and sleep. It's all about money for you right here in October. What's the six of pentacles? Why do they care? The devil and the nine of wands. Someone is giving money or giving to a situation. This could be energy that's getting them beat up, okay? And when I say being beat up by the devil, it represents like an energy is taking its toll on you. You're giving your energy and then something is leeching that energy and putting you into this nine of wands energy. What is this hermit energy doing up here? We have the queen of cups. We have the high priestess. In a way, what I'm seeing for you is that the more you do something, the more the devil leeches off of you. When you give out your energy, whenever you expel energy right here, it's like the devil is leeching your energy off of you. In a way, what I'm seeing is that, how can I say this? The high priestess with the queen of cups representing you have a secret, right? You're speaking your secrets. You're telling people you're coming off as a, like a siren. With this high priestess, it's coming from like an occultic realm, a very high realm, hindsight being 2020. It's like the highest level of good and evil knowledge that you can have, right? But this devil and this nine of wands, it's like every time you use your energy, you get beat up. Every time you give out your energy, you're finding it very hard to recover from the situation. Or maybe that's your secret is that you give out your energy and then you go to sleep. I feel like that's a theme in, Oct in October is that if you feel tired, you should sleep. I know I said that for another reading right here. Let me clarify this again. The lovers, the eight of wands, the page of cups. So the devil and the lovers coming out. So a perverse version of the lovers. So it's like you're connecting to these page of cups right here. You're giving them with this queen of cups, you're giving them, you know, like knowledge, you're giving them words, you're giving them fulfillment. However, the devil is taking from you. The devil is hurting you in some way with this six of pentacles, because every time you use the energy, it rips from you. Every time you spend this energy, it puts you in a very lax state. I'm not saying you're getting your powers or your energy from the devil right here. It's just a card that's come out. But the devil also rules money. So Capricorn energy. So someone is spying on the way that you spend your money. Okay. Someone sees that you get, you're giving to things that are hurting you. Okay, so you're giving to things that are hurting you. This could be a symbol of Say, for instance, a lot of people, they'll smoke marijuana before they do a reading or they'll get drunk before they do a reading or something like that because it helps them, you know, get into that level. I really don't think that's what you need to be doing right here. <clears throat> I think someone knows that about you. Maybe you're using a vice and addiction that's hurting you to get through something. This can also be representation of maybe you're drinking too much caffeine. Maybe you're drinking too many energy drinks. It's taking a toll on your body so that way you can give to other people. Something that you are doing, someone knows that you have a wellspring of money. You have an, a lot of nice things. What you could be doing is going to work and going to sleep, going to work and going to sleep. But what you're choosing to do is you're choosing to help other people. Someone knows that you don't have to help other people right here. Someone is seeing that you're doing it out of the goodness of your heart and they see that you're hurting yourself in return by doing this. Is this Page of Swords good? Yeah, the Empress. The Page of Swords is really, really good right here. So in a way, it's kind of like 
you could be very well off, but you still do things for other people. And someone is paying attention to that. They know that you're running yourself ragged, like you're expending a lot of energy and you're doing it from like a good perspective with the lover's energy. You're like coming off from very good energy, nurturing energy. You're helping other people. You're giving with this queen of cups and this high priestess to these pages right here. But in return, it hurts you with this devil. It's like you're just doing too much right now. And someone knows that. Someone, I think, cares about you deeply. What do they want? The Ace of Wands, the Sun, and the Six of Wands. Ace of Wands, Sun, and the Six of Wands. I feel like this page, someone over here. Okay. I feel like someone is watching your attitude to see how you treat people when you have stuff, right? Now you have the Nine of Pentacles and the Knight of Pentacles. Maybe you're doing okay within your life and someone is watching and seeing how you treat people when you have money. I feel like you do the same thing. Regardless of how much wealth, regardless of how much of stuff you have, you still are a very kind person. You still go out of your way, even if it puts you in a bind with the devil and the nine of wands energy. You're still helping people. You're still loving, even when it hurts you. And now this person sees your true value and sees your worth, and they want to have victory with you because they know that you're truly not a bad person, Scorpio. Someone sees your true value right here. Someone sees you as like, you know, a very loving, nurturing person. You might have this very occultic energy with the hermit coming out. That could be you. You might have a lot of secrets. You might have a lot of knowledge about certain things. You could be like very tip top person, but someone seeing you as different from everyone else. Imagine like, you know, some doctors are assholes. Some people are like way up there, like multimillionaires, billionaires, whatever, they're jerks. However, in some societies, I believe it's in like Sweden or whatever, the really rich people go and eat at like the same restaurants as everyone else. Like they do that on purpose to make sure that everyone knows where that they come from the same place. That's kind of what I'm seeing from here. It's like you didn't change up who you were. You're still the same person. You're still a loving, maybe you've matured into this person. Regardless of however you have it, regardless of your money, regardless of what you do, you do things out of the kindness of your heart. And someone sees that and they want you to have victory right here. Someone wants to start a new opportunity with you. You have the sunlight, which is a very happy card, a card of Leo. And you have the six of wands. Remember, Libra cast Scorpio away from Leo and cast Virgo into Leo. So what I'm seeing is that you're getting redemption right here in a weird way. You're being in a way redeemed because it's kind of like, you know, You've suffered on earth for a long time to pay off negative karma. And sometimes you can have redemption from that. That's what this is. Like you have all this powers and you've chosen to use it for good. You've chosen to help other people. You didn't have to. But because you're choosing to do so, this could be you making a pact with the devil right here and you got all of your powers from the devil or from a demon or whatever, like Gremory or Baba Yaga, you know, like I talked about John Wick earlier but you choose to use it for good instead. Like you could do things for evil. You could do things, you know, completely neutral. You could just hurt people. You could do whatever you wanted to, right? And people would be scared of you. People would be completely terrified. But because you chose to use it for good, because you chose to help other people, because you say, hey, that's the whole point of humanity. I may have gone too far, but I can help other people. That's your redemption. There's something here helping you move forward. There is a very happy, harmonious thing because you're choosing to still put yourself on the line to push people forward. You're still allowing people to drink from the cup of immortality with the Queen of Cups and giving it to the pages because you are truly blessed by the divine. You may have gotten your powers through some negative means, but in a way it was like connected to the divine. And when you got these powers, you're still a good person. The Queen of Pentacles. Once again, it's kind of like the devil right here giving it away because remember the Queen of Pentacles is represented by Capricorn. She's beautiful. She's fertile. She's abundant. It's kind of like devil energy as well, but she's choosing to give it away. Temperance. 
being blessed by an angel. You're still working for the angelic side, Scorpio. This is a really weird reading. Knight of Swords, but it's the message that you need to hear. The Three of Swords. There is some heartbreak here, though, for you. There is messages of heartbreak. Maybe you're working through heartbreak. Maybe someone knows you've been through heartbreak, but you're still choosing what's going on with the Three of Swords. You have the Four of Pentacles and you have the Judgment Call. You need to hold on for judgment now. You need to wait for judgment. I think what's scary for you is that you're still waiting for judgment to happen. You're waiting for judgment day to arrive. I kind of feel like it scares you in a way. Ten of Swords, yeah, it scares you. It's a mental death for you. King of Pentacles. The Wheel of Fortune. But it's the Wheel of Fortune for you. You're doing the right thing because you've chosen to. You're helping. You're putting yourself on the line. And because of that, you've got some sort of redemption. You're still scared of Judgment Day. You're still scared of like what will happen at the end of the world. But I feel like that's how fortune changes for you. You suffer a defeat. Here's the thing. There's a song by Abba called Waterloo. All right. There is something called a Waterloo in people's lives. A lot of people don't want to experience that. I feel like what happens here, Scorpio, is that later on down the line, you're expecting the Waterloo to happen to you because you may have gone too far. You may have gotten your powers, whatever. But you're waiting for Waterloo to happen, the Ten of Swords. I don't think that's the case, all right? I don't think that that's actually going to happen to you. You might experience a form of that, but everyone has to experience that in life. Wheel of Fortune, King of Pentacles, the Tower. Yeah, everyone has to. The King of Pentacles, Wheel of Fortune, spinning it into the Tower, spinning it into destruction. But the Ten of Cups is here. But you're saved in the end. That's the whole point. I feel like, Scorpio, in order to be redeemed right here, you have to have some sort of Waterloo moment happen for you. But when it happens, you're going to see things clearly. When the Waterloo happens, that's your judgment call. Feels like the Ten of Swords with the Tower. But it ends on the Ten of Cups for you. You're happy that it's over. You... In the end, it's kind of like watching everything that you've worked for burn. But you're free from that contract, if that makes sense. You're free from whatever the situation was that put you in this situation in the first place. You're choosing to use whatever you have to help people. You're choosing to put yourself on the line. You're choosing to, you know, take the beatings of the Ten of Wands from the, or the Nine of Wands from the devil. You're choosing to put yourself through kind of like a self-sacrifice moment right here, Scorpio. By you doing so, the sunlight, God, whatever the situation is, can offer you a new victory. But the new victory is watching the tower fall, whatever you've built for yourself. It feels like the Ten of Swords moments, but once it happens, you can be happy. It's like a better fulfilling ending overall because you realize that everything you built was like, it was worth it in the end. The Ten of Cups is the ultimate fulfillment. I don't know how to explain this for you. What else? The Six of Pentacles, you're given the ultimate fulfillment. I feel like you're expecting the worst to happen. And when the worst does happen, it has the best outcome. The worst leads to the best. The worst leads to the best. Let's look at that with the Vampire Terror. The worst leads to the best. The Eight of Knives with the Wheel of Fortune with the Queen of Skulls. You're freed from it, whatever it is. You're freed from the chains that have kind of bound you to the situation with the Eight of Swords. It's kind of like, 
how monks give up everything to go and live in the wild. But you're spinning yourself into the Queen of Skulls right here. Hierophant, Five of Cups. You're finding out that what you sought after was not fulfilling after all. I feel like what your problem is right here is that Bible stories sometimes are boring. They teach you how to live a good life. They tell you to be a good person, blah, 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 right? But in the end, when you go and you search for things, it can ultimately lead you to destruction. You find what you're searching for. But what you're searching for is not all it's cracked up to be. It was a chasing after the wind. But some people cling to that. And some people will say, well, now I have this knowledge of how am I going to use it? Well, I'm going to help people with it. And if that is my self-sacrifice, if whatever happens at the end of the world, it is what it is. But because you're doing this, because you understand that there was no pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, because you've suffered it, the universe will allow you to, will take it back in a very violent way, but that is the ultimate happiness for you, whatever the situation is. But you do end up on a very happy note. You still end up on the Queen of Skulls with, you still end up on the Queen of Skulls. Daughter of Knives, someone is still watching this. Maybe this is a situation that's already taken place and someone's watching it. Someone watch it transpire. Someone is like, well, how can we mess up Scorpio's life? How can we do this to Scorpio? How can we knock Scorpio down a few pegs? It's because you have the secrets already. You can build from the ground up no matter how many times people come in and try to knock it down. Whenever they knock down your tower, you're like, okay, whatever, I can still rebuild it. And you rebuild it. And people watch you rebuild it. And like, how is Scorpio rebuilding the tower? Because you already have the secrets and you're still being blessed by the divine to build everything up. So I kind of feel like someone is trying to knock down your tower. They might succeed, but here's the thing. When the tower falls, you're happy again because the angels come in and help you rebuild it again. It's like a never-ending cycle for you, Scorpio. Whenever someone tries to knock something down, something better comes in and rebuilds itself. Because the angels know that regardless of what happens, you're still going to not change. You're still going to be the same individual. Two of Scepters, the Three of Cups. Moving quickly with the group in a way. Page of Skulls, Eight of Skulls. They can knock it down, they could work together, they could do everything again, but the Page of Skulls has the power of the Eight of Skulls. The Page has the power of the Master Mason with the Eight. They could, they could tear down the entire world and you would simply have the knowledge to rebuild it again. And they could tear it down and you would rebuild it. And it wouldn't change you. So let's look at your witches familiars. But you have the sun, the ace of wands, and the six of scepters. You're saved. You're, vict you're victorious. You're very happy in the situation. People could always come and knock it down. But it's you end on the ten of cups. You have the high priestess with the queen of cups. It's like you have a lot of really good cards here. You end up victorious. But there is a shakeup. But through the shakeup, there's a victory with the Ten of Cups. And the situation rebuilds itself again. You have the Butterfly, Fragility, Mouse, Advantage. Yeah, they could knock down the tower because the tower is fragile. Anything we make as human is fragile. But you have the advantage because you know how to rebuild it again. And you can rebuild it better. Let's look at your spellcasting oracle cards. You have an advantage. You know this energy too. You know who these people are. You have an idea of who they are or what this situation is. But your advantage is that every time it happens, you can redo it. You have commitment and you have life purpose. I want to pull one card for commitment. Because commitment in this deck actually means broken commitment. So it's like you've broken the commitment of your life's purpose. One card, the five of pentacles.
the Five of Pentacles and the Hierophant coming out, both leading to Ten. So you have the Ten of Swords, you have the Ten of Cups coming out. The King of Cups, your energy coming out. You could build the king. You could build the kingdom again. You have the capabilities. You have all the skills to do so. But every time you build this kingdom, you build it with other people's emotions in mind. You have the queen and the king coming out with the pages. You have basically the idea of how do I take care of everyone? You could take all the money in the world for yourself, but you choose not to. You choose to go into this five of pentacles energy to help other people out. That's the theme of the reading. Five of Wands. Because you understand that fighting breeds poverty. So basically, what this is, it, I'll give you an example. So you go to medical school, we'll use it as an example for you. Go to medical school, right? You become a doctor. Other people are going to want to become plastic surgeons, whatever, get extra specialized training, but you just decide, I'm going to learn to do basic surgeries, I'm going to be a doctor. And you go back to your hometown, maybe you lived in like a really bad section of town, and you're going to open up your practice, you're going to take care of people in your community. Now, you have the capabilities to, you know, have a really nice life for yourself going to a different place. Well, you build up your little small practice in this town. Some people decide, well, you know what? We don't like this person. And I feel like it's someone who knows you. Someone knows you. And they're like, you know what? We're going to burn down this build building to the ground. We're going to burn down Scorpio's business. But what they don't account for is that you have the insurance policy, which is the temperance angel right here. And it's funny because as soon as I looked down, I saw the temperance angel. You have an insurance policy. And the insurance pays for a better building with better equipment. That's the sadness, but that's the happiness. And regardless of however someone tries to tear this situation down, it can never be torn down. It will always rise back up to be better because you have the idea that you want to take care of people. You want to take care of the pages because you understand poverty breeds violence. That's what this is. It's, it's like you're going back to the commitments of your life goals. Maybe you've broken them in the past. And that could be the idea of the devil right there. Maybe that's where you got your powers from. You're like, I don't ever want to help anyone again. I'm going to be this greedy person. I'm going to, you know, get everything that I want for myself. And maybe that's what you did. Maybe you went out and did that. And then you're like, you know what? I'm not happy. I'm actually going to go back to my life's purpose because I understand that through all the knowledge, through all the secrets, through everything that you've learned, it all is all kind of like a chasing after the wind. The Three of Wands with the Life Purpose, the Seven of Swords. I feel like in a way you've got, with your life purpose, you've had to do some shady things. Yeah, like, I mean, we can all sit here and admit we've never done anything bad within our lives, but everyone's done something bad, right? You kind of did something bad for this life purpose. You kind of like maybe turned yourself away from your faith or whatever it is just for like a, maybe a couple of years to test it out, but you still went back to figure things out, to change the world. You went back to your life purpose right here. The Nine of Swords, you're still nervous about it. You're still scared, but you've been saved by the situation. You have the Ace of Swords. That's the information. You're saved by the situation because you connected. Here's the thing. There's something called being given over to a reprobate mind. I've talked about it within the readings before, and it's coming back up, so let's talk about it. There are people in this world who will see the knowledge and the magic of the devil and they will be polarized and they will never want to leave it. They will always want more and more for themselves. And then there are people who do the same thing and then the angels save them because God doesn't want to give them over to a reprobate mind. A reprobate mind is being like lawless without morals, without morality. You don't, you see a poor person, you want to throw an egg at them because when we think about it, Scorpio, people like to see human suffering 
regardless of if you want to admit that or not. You need to admit that to yourself right here. You, and this is a, a rule of the world for you, okay? People like to see human suffering. That is why people for thousands of years have sacrificed other people, have tortured other people, have beheaded other people in front of people, have hanged people, have thrown them to the lions in the Colosseum, have done all kinds of torture tactics, you know, the, the Iron Maiden, the rack, public executions. People love to see human suffering. When people like that, that's called being given over to a reprobate mind. You might have wanted to see human suffering and then you saw it. You saw what it actually was. And maybe you were around the people who were throwing eggs at these people at the Colosseum, but something didn't feel right. Something about it was just wrong. And so you decided, you know what? I'm not going to be like those people. I'm going to help them, the people that they're throwing to the lines, the poor people. By doing so, that goes back to your life purpose. You've been saved and not given over to a reprobate mind. Those people cannot be saved, Scorpio. Those people can't be woken up unless by an actual act of God. But here's the thing. Most of the time, once they've crossed that line, once they've understood that for themselves, once they say, I understand, but I don't care. I want to see more people suffer. Then it's too late for them. That's when it's too late. So anyway, let's look at more. Let's look at your Awaken Oracle cards. You have reflect, begin anew. Reflect on the situation and begin anew. I kind of feel like regardless of the waterloos that take place within your life, regardless of if, you know, the good Lord takes things away or whatever happens within your life, it comes back better because that's the insurance policy. That's the angel of temperance. Those are the angels coming out saying, it's okay, Scorpio. Like, you're going to have to suffer, you know, sad things too because you have to think about it. Sometimes those people never suffer anything bad in their lives. They save the karma until when they die. It is what it is. I'm seeing that you're t understanding karma has to take place in small doses, but every time karma happens, it's replaced with the Ten of Cups. Someone does burns down your building, destroys all your equipment, your insurance company takes over it. Or maybe the people in your community or your city or your government leaders are paying attention and seeing you with this page of swords and they see you as a good person, they're like, you know what, let's all come together and help the Scorpio again. Something like that. Let's look at your Halloween oracles. Zombie control, release control, spell of stars, infinite possibilities. Release control right here. You can't control everything. And I kind of feel like that's what your problem is, is you're still trying to cling on to control over something. You're trying to not have the Waterloo happen. Skull of Stars, infinite possibilities. But here's the thing with the Ten of Cups. When it happens, it leads you to something so much more grand in the end. It's like from the ashes, something is reborn. That's what the... Uh, burning it down with the tower with the phoenix coming out. Reflect on it. What could possibly happen from the ashes? What could possibly occur from disaster to you, Scorpio? You have potency, achievement, difficulties overcome, creativity, completion, fertility, unity, and equanimity. You would complete a cycle within your life. You'd complete the cycle with the devil. Rado, speed your journey, ease of transition, aid communication, bring good news, and find your spiritual way. It's kind of like the angels are protecting you, right? This is a very, um, I studied this for a little bit, so let's look at it. Let's talk about this. I know it's kind of scary, you know, it's Halloween time, but whatever. When someone makes a pact with the devil, and the devil tries to show them everything, show them, you know, human suffering, try to make him laugh with them, right? The angels will come in. The angels will show you a path to choose. Now you can choose the reprobate mind path or you can be freed from that. So you choose the angels. The angel still guides you to help you attain some sort of enlightenment and keeps you safe. The angel allows you to use your powers of whatever you have from the devil as long as you start using them for good. However, the angel eventually has to come to a point where it says, hey, look, because of what you did, I have to punish you. And there's no way going around that. And you're scared. You're trying to release, you're trying to gain control. It's like, no, 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 let me just do more things. And the angel's like, if I just do the punishment for you, it'll be a lot better in the end. 
And like, I don't want to have the punishment happen. Eventually, you have to come to the realization that you have to allow the angel to perform the punishment. And it's not as bad as what it is. It is a Ten of Swords moment. It is a very quick mental death, but the Ten of Cups arises from it. That's what the angels want you to know right now, Scorpio. So let's look at your, um, I think I pulled all the cards. Let me get you one more, um, which is familiar. Maybe I didn't even pull those. Yeah, I did. Let me get you one more. You have bee community. The beehive. The community will take care of you. Something much better will happen for you, Scorpio, okay? So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this reading, and I'll talk to you later.